Um, well, I, I got the idea after reading a, a newspaper article um, about uh, back in 2004, shortly after the earthquake that caused the tsunami in Indonesia. I read that that earthquake was so massive that it affected the rotation of the Earth. and by a slight amount, by a few microseconds per day. Uh, but when I read that, I just, I, I couldn't believe it. I had no idea that that was possible. And it was, I thought it was very unsettling. That's something that I had always thought was um, so certain. You know, the steady rising and setting of the sun was actually something that could change. And uh, I just began to wonder right away what would happen if uh, a change in the rotation was much, had been much larger. And so that was the seed of, of, of the book, start that, that question. You know, when I, I, I initially wrote a short story right after reading that article in which the rotation of the Earth did speed up by like an hour. Uh, and uh, I set that story aside for a couple of years and, and then came back to it. And, and when I came back to it, it just felt like maybe there was more um, more to it and maybe I could turn it into a novel, but the first change I made uh, was to have the Earth slow down instead. And it's hard to say exactly exactly why that seemed more more fruitful, more haunting, but it, it just felt like there was there would be more to the story if it had that ongoing, that there, there was more to tell that way. I was interested in that parallel and what's going on in, in Julia's life um, as she you know deals with some of the things that a lot of 11 year old girls are dealing with you know cracks in friendships noticing that her parents aren't um, aren't exactly who she thought they were or you know just noticing the, the flaws that they um, they have and all the all the usual awkwardnesses about uh, of adolescence um, but I, I did want to the reason that I chose to focus on uh, a young girl uh, like Julia is that I, I felt like that was a way to tell such a big global story in a way that I hoped would feel, you know, intimate and personal and in that sense, hopefully real. So that perspective was uh, important to me, and I, I also I'm interested in that in that age. Um, I definitely think it's it's a, an interesting time in life, and maybe the time when you first uh, start to notice things that you that you didn't uh, notice when you're younger, but. Um, but yet you still have that kind of intensity of vision of a, of a young 11-year-old, I mean, of a young child. At the same time that she is learning to navigate the world, which I think is what adolescence is for everyone, but for her and for you know, all the other kids at her age at the time, it's that world that they're learning to navigate is uh, constantly changing and they know that you know, it's very uncertain. You know, what, so everything that they're learning about how to live in the world is subject to change because everything is changing so quickly. I always think fiction works better just if, if you if you write in if a story it just um, forms and grows organically. So it isn't like I approached the the book with some sort of message that I wanted to make sure came across. But I um, I did use things uh, reports about climate change um, as a, a way to try to understand and imagine how people, how, how we would react to the kind of news um, that, that happens in the book. So anytime there was a story about, you know, extreme weather or uh, rising temperatures um, or, you know, even, even other types of environmental catastrophes like extinction of species or, plant, um, or animals, I always tried to learn from what was happening in our real world um, so that I could better represent what's happening you know, in the book, in the context of the of the slowing. So I, I, I wrote it over a few years while I was working full time as a as a book editor. Um, so the morning was really the only time that I that the only working time that I that I had. And um, I also think that writing for me, I still write in the morning, even though I now have a different um, schedule. But I something about when I first wake up is the time when when. Um, there aren't any distractions in my mind yet. I can just focus on writing. So it was a good time for me to work, but it was definitely took a certain discipline to do it every day, especially. And I often felt, um, you know, concerned about the pace at which I was as I, I was producing pages because I only had really that that one hour each morning and then a few hours on the weekends. Um, but I think it was it was good. It, it, it maybe it even helped me develop a certain d discipline. Um, having to squeeze the writing into just that one hour. As a book editor, it was always challenging to find time to read uh, beyond what I was doing for work, but I thought it was really important, um, especially as a writer, to, to keep reading for, for pleasure. So, um, because I, I, I'm always, every time I read, 
a novel that I love or a story that I love, I learn something from it and I try to, you know, try to make my own writing better um, based on that. So I guess uh, some of my favorite books are um, The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides, um, Blindness by Jose Saramago, uh, The Road by Cormac McCarthy. And, and those two, Blindness and The Road, are obviously they, that, you know, apocalyptic or semi-apocalyptic element. Um, that that what they were um, something I thought about mm -hmm. uh, as I wrote as I wrote my book, but uh, I also just love great stories about um, people and emotions, and especially when it's paired with great writing. So, mm -hmm. um, Housekeeping by Marilyn Robinson, and um, pretty much anything that Jhumpa Lahiri has written, those would be those are the books that I kind of turn to mo most often. Well, thank you. Thanks. That's a good question.